The Himalayas are among the world's most seismically active regions. Just next door in Nepal, an earthquake killed thousands of people in 2015. In this edition of Global Japan, we look at how Japanese scientists are working with their local colleagues to reinforce traditional architecture to better withstand the next big one. It's woven into the cityscape of the capital, Timfu. Architecture with stone or packed earth makes up two-thirds of all dwellings across Bhutan, from government offices to the football stadium to the gasoline station. That's why Bhutan and the Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA, staged the country's first full-scale stress test with a team applying hydraulic pressure, then checking the results. We have some fresh new cracks here, yeah, don't we? Yes, yeah. yes. We can see diagonal cracks. So that means the structure needs to be reinforced? Reinforced, yes. Yes. Next to that packed earth mock-up is one out of stone, wood and earth. We talk with the project coordinator for JICA. So Gaijiro, you're reinforcing this building. How are you doing that? Yes, uh, we are uh, putting the wire mesh, which is a locally available material in Bhutan. And you're also putting wooden beams uh, in the ceilings, right? Sure, yes. Uh, we choose a wooden material to put a brace on the ceiling to make it stronger. It's a local adaptation of technology developed in Japan at NIED. Hiroshi Inoue heads the Bhutan project. In Japan, they've put hundreds of sensors underground and off the coast to study quakes and tsunamis. Our 800 high sensitivity stations are used to detect an earthquake as early as possible and uh, process the data uh, in seconds. We have a ocean bottom cable installed and each nose has approximately 200 uh, seismic sensors and the pressure gauge to measure the water depth uh, to monitor tsunami in real time. His colleague at NIED, Hiroshi Nakazawa, works with full-size mock-ups of buildings to do 3D tests for earthquake resistance. To evaluate the earthquake resistance realistically, we have to go on site after it happens. We can't think about a solution if we don't study how they collapse. This is why we use this big experimentation machine to precisely hypothesize the causes of the destruction and to find solutions. Nakazawa has been studying traditional gabion stone houses of Nepal, where the deadly quake in 2015 devastated mountain villages. We notice that the gabions are highly resistant to earthquakes, and the reason they collapsed was they were not well plastered, so I studied how to use this type of construction to create better structures. Back in Bhutan, the international cooperation also goes beyond quake-proofing. We spoke to the country's chief architect on the project. So this test we saw today is part of a larger project, isn't it? Well, besides the scientific study of the composite masonry that you saw this morning, we are also trying to understand the seismic hazard mapping of the entire country. At the geology department is a real-time map of sensors across Bhutan, a project backed by JICA and World Bank. It was an event that occurred in China. The magnitude was 4.4. So what happens when there is a big earthquake? What happens here? If it's a major event, then we'll be sending it to Prime Minister, the ministers, and all the heads. They're also training the builders. One master craftsman insists it doesn't bother him that their work here will eventually be knocked down in a stress test. I'm OK with that, because through this, if you knock down this building, you're going to get more innovation. They put mannequins inside, so through all the results, this will also save lives. We speak with architect Pema, whose family owns this 100-year-old house. I feel that it's very important for us to showcase to our future generation this is how our ancestors lived. And it is our responsibility as the present generation to pass it down rightly to the future generations. That's all for now on Global Japan. From all of us here on the Euronews team, we say shule log jege. See you later, and thanks for watching.